When you're flying VFR, you use a sectional chart for navigation. The sectional chart of the Knoxville area here emphasizes features and information you'd need if you were flying with visual reference to the horizon and ground. In IFR flight, we'll use an IFR low and root chart, which emphasizes what we need for instrument flying. Let's have a look at the basics of instrument charts, and in the next several videos, we'll dive deeper into everything these charts are telling us. Let's start by looking at airports. Here's the Knoxville Airport as depicted on the low and root chart. We can compare this to how the same information is presented for this airport on the VFR sectional and see that it's not too different. On the en route chart, the airport info is listed in blue to show that it has a control tower. Towered airports, being either Class B, C, or D airspace, will have their airspace shown in a box here. The next line below this should be familiar. It's in the same format on the sectional and shows the airport elevation at 986 feet, that runway lighting is available, and that the longest runway length is about 10,000 feet. The IFR chart skips mentioning the Unicom frequency of 122.95 or the control tower frequency of 121.2, but it does show the ATIS frequency of 128.35. It's assumed that IFR flights would have briefed the other frequencies or have them assigned by ATC, so they're left off the en route chart. Other airports that don't have control towers aren't listed in blue. This airport has a green circle in information, which means that it has published instrument approach procedures. An airport that doesn't have an instrument approach procedure to it, like this private airfield here, will be colored brown. And then airports like this will only be shown on the en route chart if they have paved runways at least 3,000 feet long. Looking at latitude and longitude on the en route chart, we see that the intersection of these two blue lines is at north 36 degrees, west 83 degrees. You might recall that one minute of a degree along a longitude line is one nautical mile. The hash marks on the en route chart represent 10 minutes of a degree. So this span along the longitude line would show 10 nautical miles. Be careful though, you may also know that while you can use this to determine distance along a longitude line, you can't do the same thing along a line of latitude. This is because the closer to the poles we get, the smaller the spacing on these latitude lines, while the longitude lines always keep the same spacing as they represent the so-called great circles. While we're over on this side of the chart, let's look at the VOR station. This is the Snowbird Vortac. It's much clearer to make out on the en route chart compared with the sectional chart, which is cluttered with more information. Notice on the sectional chart, the radius of the compass rose is 10 nautical miles. On the en route chart, the distance from the VOR to the edge of the compass rose is just four miles. Other nav aids that you'd expect to see are depicted on the chart as well. Here's the Jefferson NDB. Sometimes the en route chart will depict this racetrack pattern, noting that a holding procedure is present at this point, the Pence fix. ATC can assign this hold to aircraft, which can then reference how to enter and fly the hold as it's published here. Another nav aid you'll see on the en route chart is a localizer. Here are two localizer feathers for the parallel runways at Knoxville Airport. Typically, the en route chart will only show localizers that have some other navigational use besides just for the approach to the runway. One of the main functions of the en route chart is to show airways that we'll use to navigate under IFR. IFR navigation can be accomplished using VOR, so a good deal of information is available on the en route chart to assist with that. Here we see two VORs, the Volunteer VOR and the Snowbird VOR. The line connecting them is called a Victor Airway. This is Victor 136. The V stands for VORs, since this airway is defined by the 102 radial from Volunteer and the 284 radial from Snowbird. The numbers 15, 10, and 16 are segment lengths along the airway. If we add up all the segment lengths, we get the total mileage between the VORs, which is shown in the box as 42, rounded to the nearest mile. We can use DME to tell where we are along the airway. This elongated D symbol with the number 25 and an arrow pointing east shows that at this point, we're 25 miles from the volunteer VOR our DME tuned to the Volunteer Vortac would read 25 at this point. At certain points along the airway, we should switch from using the VOR we're flying away from to the VOR we're flying towards. 
This point is depicted sometimes by this zigzag symbol called the changeover point. So if we're flying along this airway eastbound, we should switch our navigation from using the volunteer VOR to the snowbird VOR. And the DME indication will now read 17 miles. Another way besides DME to determine position is by using cross radials with another VOR. This facility locator symbol means that we can identify the same fix as being the intersection of the airway we're on with the 026 radial from the HRS VOR. And that VOR frequency and DME distance are also given. Besides Victor Airways, we also have these blue lines called T Airways. These are RNAV routes that we could fly using an approved GPS. Notice that there's no VORs or the nav aids along the T route. Since they're not dependent on being connected to a nav aid, there's a lot more areas where they could be found, making more convenient routing possible. So this is a very general overview of the IFR low end route chart. Obviously there's a bunch more going on in these charts, so in later videos we'll explore how altitude restrictions are handled and have a look at airspace and communication information. If this was helpful, please click subscribe so that you could stay up to date on every new training video coming out each Tuesday and Friday and get access to posts and articles on the community page that'll take your training even further. It just takes one click and it's so worth it.